Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. The date is Wednesday, July 27th. We are so pleased to have with us live in the studio, the Arkells. Kells. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, you are here in Chicago for Lollapalooza. You played uh, Bonner, you played Firefly, you've done all the festivals this season. Um, what do you think the touring experience is like when you're doing a bunch of festivals back to back as opposed to your, your own thing? Do you prefer one over the other? Or what are the differences? So I, it, I like that we get to do both. You know, there's something really nice about being on tour properly and going from city to city, playing five nights a week, playing in rock and roll clubs. Um, that's great, but then it's also nice for the summertime to come around, and you usually often have the week off, mm -hmm. and then you go fly somewhere or drive somewhere to do a festival, and that's nice. So you know, we play on a you know co-ed softball team. We haven't missed too many <laughs> games this summer, uh, and then on the weekend we get to come to places like Lollapalooza and Bonnaroo, and we did one um, you know in British Columbia 
on Sunday. And nice. so, and that's cool. I love the variety. I think we all sort of appreciate getting to do both. You have a co-ed softball team uh, back in Canada. Yeah, Pete Rose and the Gamblers is what we're called. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's an awesome name. You, guys, you guys are all big sports fans, right? Baseball, uh, basketball. Most of us, yeah. yeah. We, we generally like to indulge. Yeah, you said most of us. Is there like one outlier in the band? Who's... Like yeah, Tony, <laughs> t- Tony doesn't care that much about it. But, but he, he likes to hang out at bars, so but he, he comes most of the time. <laughs> yeah, do you, are you on the softball team also, Tony? No, no, I can't play sports. I yeah, don't do that. I think like softball and baseball, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a huge sports guy, but I do like playing them, but softball and baseball really does kind of scare me. I don't know. It's like the one where if you get hit with the ball, like it's really going to hurt. That's a you big know? ball, man. Yeah, no, seriously, especially <laughs> with softball. I get uh, wailed in the ear once when I was a little kid, and it's hard to not be afraid of the ball when that happens. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's kind of leisurely, though, the way we play. Every once in a while, though, there's like a hot shot who decides to show up and just <laughs> whip a ball at your head or just like is all dressed in their Major League Baseball gear. Wearing or batting gloves and yeah. stuff. <laughs> That's like, no they fun. have like helmets, official jerseys, all yeah. that yeah, good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have any of you ever gotten like knocked in the head by a softball? I feel like Nick probably Nick loves diving though for stuff. It's a, it's a, he's like a like a dog at a park running around <laughs> when he's playing baseball. He, he Nick Nick got an awesome diving catch the other game though, and it was and he got a big standing ovation even from the other team. Oh, nice, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, how would you describe the sports experience compared to the concert experience? Is it just as much of a rush or not not uh, at all? That's different. Uh, I don't know. They're both uh, they're both fun. And uh, how would you describe the? The two, uh, yeah, uh, it's a little more stressful being on stage because you, mm. you got to be thinking about entertaining people when you're playing softball with your friends. Who cares? I don't know. I'm pretty stressed at third base. I don't know why I play. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. You're just out there sweating. Yeah, I'm oh, just God. like I'm gonna get hit in the throat. Like mm. you know, somebody's gonna run Ooh. me over constantly. I'm just throat could like kill you. I mean, I guess a lot of spots could kill you playing softball. <laughs> throat in particular is the one I'm thinking about. Yeah, and yeah, anytime, yeah, anything in the throat is always gonna be a, a bad thing. I think. And also, if you're, I mean, I know you're the lead singer, but you know, you guys all sing a little bit i'm sure right so you don't want that yeah we actually the one thing about yeah. playing sports is is the injuries element because mm-hmm. i play basketball in like a monday night league yeah. in the winter and i uh like almost dislocated my pinky finger Oof. and and i've also had like a knee injury one time playing basketball and then we had a show like the week later and i was like hobbling along stage like <laughs> like an old person <laughs> building uh, some rig for yourself like dave Grohl had or, or yeah like, exactly yeah, actually like- mike just had to mike went surfing uh, in Tofino, mm-hmm. and yeah. he got his uh, some stitches. Yeah, that's why. Uh-huh. I'm, that's why I'm I'm unshaven. Doctors or doctors orders on the chin. Right but, there. Yeah. Well, we're yeah. glad to see her. You know, alive and well and everything. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm great. It wasn't like a shark bite on your no, chin. No, it was it? just I got hit in the face with a surfboard. So. <laughs> yeah, not as glamorous, but still pretty cool. Pretty cool. Surfing. Yeah. There's yeah. No, yeah. no like sharp rocks or sh- yeah, or anything like that. Surfing's still pretty neat. Well, we're glad you survived and you're here with us. So uh, let's too. hear the second song, shall we? What are we playing? What did I tell you? Uh, you told me a little rain. A little rain. Cool. By the way, I don't like it that the crew is like way hipper than the band right now. You guys like a really hip crew. <laughs> they have to be. If you saw the people behind the cameras, can you guys just like point the cameras at each other for a second and just look how fucking <laughs> dope you look? Like, look at this guy's outfit. Jesus That's Christ. Great. Great, I'm just thinking, great about I gotta start. Shirt, look at the way dye. they roll up their jeans. I was like, man, they're ahead of the curve there. All right. You know, you've got. I mean, your jeans are on your oh, ankles a little bit. Yeah. Though, you know? Whatever. Yeah. It's not as good. You get well. You can replicate their look this yeah. weekend. Just I as know. Long as I, yeah. think, I think people at Lala deserve that. Okay, a little yeah. rain. Here we go. <laughs> okay, cool. I was getting desperate. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. A couple bad days had turned into months. In months, I stumbled in to St. Peter's Cathedral oh, that I was. I never tried religion, but man, I try anything once. You were smiling, you were wearing a t shirt from a rally in 1992. When the rain starts coming down Oh yeah A little rain ain't bringing me down When the rain starts coming down Oh yeah A little rain ain't bringing me down Well please say 
watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with the Arkells. Um, I actually just got the, your latest album, uh, The Morning Report, pretty recently. And I can't remember, are those calls to your band members? Are they on the recording? Like, the look at those fingers go, Tone, and the, hey, Timmy boy. Where's <laughs> <laughs> uh, that improvised? So. No, he's yeah. always heckling me <laughs> during the shows. It's just a constant heckle. It just heckles teases. us all. <laughs> I, there is one, like, we do have, like, uh, live bits mm -hmm. that... I, I, that kind of might be extended depending on what the crowd's feeling. Totally. And so, but that's the cue for the drum fill. Mm -hmm. Is it because otherwise, because if there's a good crowd, we'll milk it for totally six or seven minutes. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but if we got to keep it moving, like we are here today, uh, I just get it go. Say, Timmy boy, and that's the the cue for the yeah, it's the drum fill. Nice little interjection. Yeah. Um, at Lyle this weekend, do you anticipate the crowd being super into that, so he can do like a Moby Dick kind of thing and just you know, <laughs> go nuts? With it oh no, this or, is yeah. all for Max to go on a tangent, not me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. though I encourage drum solos when, when appropriate. So. Yeah, totally. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and so that so that wasn't like a surprise. I see either of those things happening just now. No. Like the, okay, there was well, definitely I mean, a moment I've never of done like the look at those fingers yeah, go. Like, <laughs> that's the yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you saying? There's definitely a moment of. Or, I was saying there's definitely a moment of like, what's yeah. he gonna do? There's no crowd in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just looks and ah, ah, yeah. yeah. Well, in Lolly, you have a lot more space. So you can run around and, yeah, and yeah. do all that stuff. You know. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I'll see bands live and. Before I listen to the album, they'll do a certain thing on stage that I think is super rad, and then I listen to the record, and it's not there, and it just feels like a little like, oh no, you know. So um, and yeah. we do like to keep in the uh, yeah, and like there's we have there's a whole like <laughs> yeah. somebody made an Arkell's compilation of my yelps. Oh man, really? Hey, yep. Yeah, who like it's, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> is there a super cut of that on YouTube or anything? There is uh, Indie Eighty Eight, which is a cool radio station in Toronto. They in, did they did one. I'm gonna write that down yeah, so I can. We'll uh, find it for you. Yeah, I'll be a <laughs> Lyle this weekend, so I'll uh, I'll be in the crowd like playing that in my phone or something <laughs> like that cool uh let's go into the next song shall we uh private school is that cool uh, yeah okay all right yeah this is uh, uh, uh the first single off uh, morning report called private school uh yep. yeah. you guys good okay <laughs> how's the internet doing is the internet doing good i think so i mean cool. i don't have i don't have like a feed into my ear or anything okay like we'll that. assume it's going great out there yeah <laughs> I hear it has more views than like both the conventions combined. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. Right, here we go. Okay. Ah! Private school girls and private school boys playing games, expensive toys. Private school girls and private school boys. No road wide north. I tried so hard to find an in, but you weren't giving me anything. Come on now, throw me a line. It's a sign. I fuck up. Don't say I do the same. Get it off without an ounce of shame. Oh, you know, I just wanna love you, but it's so Give me a chance, give me a world. You walk in, my jaw hit blow. You act like this is such a chore. Around you, I feel like swine. You're divine. I forgot. Don't say I do the same. Get it out without an ounce of shame. Oh, you know, I just wanna love you. Get it off without an ounce of 
to shame Oh, you know I just want to love you But it's so hard I just want to love you I do that part extra kind of drunk and annoying. <laughs> You're watching Audio Tree Live, and we're in the studio with the Arkells. Uh, that was a great ending, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's about like bratty kids and uh -huh. just like being the most annoying people ever. Just, like, well, really rich kids get ready for Lala this weekend then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to that. Ooh, yeah. But you know, I, the, the song is like intentionally pretty stupid, mm -hmm. but, but, but kind of poking fun. Yeah. And I like when. Uh, Cake or Becker, like mm -hmm. they they do that, and but then bros have their shirts off, and they're like yeah, yeah, and they're like pumping their fists, and they're to like, it. Yeah. it's kind of about them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're not quite getting it. It's yeah, like, but that's yeah. the beauty of it, though. You know? Yeah, once, but yeah, it's Beck and Cake, I feel like that's very much in their sense of humor. It's totally. like the sort of poking fun, like rich slackers in a weird totally. way. But yeah, but then you know, it's I think it's a good, it's a good shared joke. It's all in good fun. Yeah, of right? course, yeah. yeah, exactly. Nothing too mean spirited. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, no, and once again, I think the, the summer crowd will eat that sort of thing right up. Um, yeah, I actually thought when you were starting to slur out for a second, I was like, oh no, is he all right? <laughs> is he going like, <laughs> <laughs> having a seizure? <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> He's getting heat stroke or, or something. Like, no, are you all right? Um, I, I know. You you, yeah, no, exactly. I, I know you guys aren't playing today, but I have to ask. Um, you have the song Drake's dad. Oh yeah, you have you met him in real life. He's going to be in the music video, right? Which I know hasn't come out. It yet. comes out tomorrow. It does. Oh, oh man, I don't know if this was tell people. What it comes out tomorrow? Audio tree exclusive. Yeah. Um, what I without ruining too much of the video, could you just go over a little bit you uh, about you meeting him and how that got worked into the video? Yeah. So uh, the story, the song is about a true story about sixteen friends of mine going on a bachelor trip through the American South. We started in Memphis, went to Nashville. I went to Louisville. We rented three minivans, <laughs> 16 wow. dudes in three minivans. And while we were in Memphis, we were at a bar, and we were getting very giddy on, on friendship and cheap Other American things. alcohol. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, and Drake's dad was there. And yeah. then we, re we recognized him because he's a very recognizable Yeah, he's figure. got that big mustache. He's got big mustache. He's a session musician down yeah. there, right? Yeah, was, yeah, he's, anyway. he was, yeah. And so we, like, got a picture with him, and it, it kind of was very exciting. Anyway, so the song's sort of mostly about friendship, but then also wanting to like crawl back into bed somehow most of us have girlfriends i don't know how but uh <laughs> and uh crawl back into bed on a sunday night just like i missed you but anyway so the song's called drake's dad and uh we we reached out and we told him about the song and we said do you want to be in the video and he's like sure <laughs> <laughs> nice and uh so uh we filmed it with him uh down, we met him down in la and he was he's a super nice guy i was actually just texting him like uh really? he's in chicago right now oh man hey if because you're drake just played in chicago last night oh that's right well drake's dad dennis graham, dennis that's graham. Him. yeah come down and and watch he the said session. he has to fly to memphis tonight oh really man yeah. if he had been in the studio that would have been that would have been super dope. cool yeah he seems from what i can tell on social media he does seem like the kind of dude who's just like down for anything he's down, yeah, yeah and we, cool. we filmed uh the scene with him it was just drake's dad and me in uh compton like in this like old like burger joint and like <laughs> people were like in the neighborhood like holy shit and getting selfies with him yeah and stuff. So, that's awesome yeah. i did have you met drake himself or we've never met i've never had any you guys met drake i don't think so there's the canadian connection i saw him walking around at a canadian award show once yeah yeah he looked really there's cool. a lot of mutual friends <laughs> and actually, he awesome. yeah like he had like this like track suit on like mm -hmm. it was like it was like very looked very comfortable like, but like i could never have won yeah it. it's it's like one of those things he could do it but Probably no one in this room could do it. I don't yeah, know. I think I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, it, it just he just had a way about him that, that uh, he gets away with lots of stuff that we couldn't. But we, uh, I feel like we're kind of uh, kindred spirits because we're the same. Drake and I are the same age. Mm -hmm. we're, I both we both grew up in Toronto, and we're both half Jewish. 
Yeah. And is we, he half Jewish? I know he, that. Of course he's half Jewish. You didn't know that? <laughs> of course. No, I, I mean, I admittedly, I know his singles and, and I, I hear his guest tracks a lot, but I, I don't I don't own like his discography or anything. Yeah. I don't have Take Care on even on like digital. Oh, yeah. Well, I, yeah. Well, yeah. he's half Jewish. And yeah. uh, so I have some uh, Jew friends that went to summer camp with him. Nice. And they yeah. say he's cool? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's Drake. He has to be yeah. cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I feel bad. I just talked about a song forever that you guys aren't going to play, but um, oh, no, it's cooler just to listen to it on the internet. Yeah, and then I, everyone will watch the video tomorrow, yeah. so that'll be good. Uh, let's go to the next one then. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do. Come back home. Awesome.
you're watching Audio Tree Live, we are in the studio with the Arkells. When you guys were sound checking, um, and you were, I think, rehearsing the falsetto, I heard someone say Jim James. Is that like uh, yeah. who you who you picture when you're you know ramping up to those higher notes? Yeah, we, that, I, that him and the Dixie Chicks. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's kind of similar, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted that like a uh, sweet Jim James uh, uh, reverb. Yeah, and, and, like whenever he does. The, I mean, those those records are pretty cloaked in reverb, generally oh, speaking. Totally. But those like, uh, like that three part with with big harmonies and yeah. big reverb. The, that uh, was dope. The record it still moves, which they just remastered. Yeah, they just I remixed think. it. Yeah, yeah, which is cool because I like that record a lot. But I remember I got it in college. And I was like, man, there's a lot of reverb on this yeah. thing. And it was the first time I'd heard My Morning Jacket, and I came to love it, but I, I want to hear the remixed one just to see if it's a little bit, um, not quite as, you know, in your face. Or, yeah, it's or, or, a little more direct or yeah. something. Yeah. Have you ever met him? I wonder if when he talks, it has, like, regular voices and reverb. No, but you know what's cool? We did that particular song with uh, Joe Ciccarelli. And oh, he's nice. a producer, engineer, who's worked with The Strokes, and My Morning Jacket, and Elton John, like a... The Shins, like mm. a, every cool band. That <laughs> Lots of high singers, except for the Strokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, but we we asked uh, about working with like all those people. So mm -hmm. he he had cool stories to tell about everybody. Nice. And he's and he said that Jim is a an awesome guy. And we actually just played uh, a show in New York with Carl, the guitar player. Oh, cool. Um, and he we talked about Joe a little bit. And Joe's. A, I think the funny thing is. Like, I have no patience for being in the studio. I'm like, mm -hmm. I one take, I'm like, we're good, right? And then, <laughs> yeah. but Joe is very meticulous and he made us run that song probably like a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And it turned out awesome. But the one thing that Carl mentioned in the studio, I was sorry, in New York when we mentioned working with Joe Chigarelli, he was like, he makes you do those songs a lot of times, huh? <laughs> and so it made us feel good that it wasn't just us. That he make, makes the song a lot of times. Was he shouting like "Sound like Jim" on the like just yeah you know, like really <laughs> no, aggressively? Like, no, like he's that, just yeah. he's just an encouraging, really sweet guy. No, a really totally. good producer. Did you guys have different producers um, for many of the songs on the album, or did you have one overall producer? No, yeah, we we intentionally wanted to just try different things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the the fun part about making a record is trying to experiment and do things differently than the last time. And um, so we broke up the the record into four different sessions. We did two songs in last September with two different guys, Tony Hoffer, who did our last record, and a mm -hmm. guy named Brian West. Um, and then we did five in October with uh, a fellow named Gus Van Gogh, who's out of New York and he's a great producer. And then we did five in December. And it was really great because it kept each session really focused on the material at hand. Because mm -hmm. it, it always felt pretty daunting having to go into a studio for like a month and a half. Yeah, and do like 12 down. songs or whatever. Yeah, that, yeah. And that just seemed really tedious and you lose perspective. But by breaking it up, you have more of an opportunity to like stand back and be able to listen back to things. And totally. it, I, I really enjoyed it. Do any of you guys have experience producing at all? Anyone in the band? Or? Uh, you, uh, yeah, Tony, got a co uh, Tony got a co-production credit because he did most of the work on one of the songs. Hey, uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's like, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome song. It's called Passenger Seat, and Tony did a bunch of keyboard nice. synthy work on it. Super cool. Uh, let's hear this very last song, then. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Yeah, this is a Joe Ciccarelli produced uh, tune. This is uh, called Making Do. Oh, sorry, John. Are you ready? Is that a surprise? <laughs> yeah. How's it going in the control room? Nice. Yeah. No, thank you guys for having us. This is an awesome setup. Oh, of course. No, yeah, we're really, really thankful to have you guys here. And uh, it's really cool to get a Lala band in here. And then, you know, we'll see you on the, the big craziness in the, yeah, yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Are you guys going? Oh, um, I'm going for sure. I'll be there all four days. Yeah, oh, nice. covering it. So, yeah, it's going to be Are you guys staying the whole time or just. Uh... We got to boogie back home because we had a couple festivals this weekend. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have an after show on the Thursday, too. So we have two shows. Which yeah. Are cool. It's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you know, one day might be enough i think I mean, mm -hmm. it, get, you get, it gets pretty nutty after a little bit so do they give you good media catering or anything yeah they do yeah happy hours and meals and stuff like that so you know how it goes yeah awesome so, all right here's what i can do, do it. when i heard no i wasn't surprised could have said it was a long time coming
the past didn't happen and So you empty out your pockets And you say all the money's been spent Now you don't come around Live, we've been here in the studio with the Arkells. If you're in the Chicagoland area, you can catch them at Lollapalooza this weekend, and then they embark on a tour with Frank Turner. And uh, check out the Drake Stab video tomorrow, as well as their album, As the Morning Report. Um, if you want to uh, support the band, you can download the session today, uh, and feel free to reach out to us on social media as well if you want to connect. I want to thank everyone in the studio for making it sound good. We want to thank everyone on cameras and lights for making us look good. Uh, we want to thank the band for being here, of course, and we always want to thank you, the viewers, for watching. Uh, until next time, uh, enjoy the weekend. Stay safe out there and this has been audio tree bye-bye nailed it awesome great job guys that was awesome oh me oh wait Happy oh. did i speak too soon sorry <laughs> <laughs> no, it, yeah. uh, no.